And that's our complex conjugate. It's really important. And you can pause and ponder now and think about Mathematicians, welcome back to another episode of Complex Numbers but Different, episode 3. Remember what we have found out up until now. We have derived our imaginary unit i and after that we have derived complex numbers in general, which are of this form. Okay, it's the real part of z plus i, the imaginary unit times the imaginary part of z. And also we have talked about closure under addition, multiplication and then we had subtraction and division, blah blah blah. At the end of the last video I proposed that there's something called the complex conjugate and we are going to work with the complex conjugate today and we are going to say a few things about preservation of the complex conjugate under multiplication, addition, etc. But at first I would like to give a little introduction to the complex conjugate and for that I would like to come back to the term called division, okay, on our complex number z. If you remember correctly, last time we z, we z, <laughs> so funny that if we were to divide a complex number z2, a set, z1 by a complex number z2, we can interpret this as multiplying z1 by the inverse, the multiplicative inverse of z2. And then we concluded that we are going to end up with simply z1, this is going to be preserved, times z2 transposed over the determinant of z2. And this is where I said this thing has something to do with the complex conjugate. I'm going to write it out yet again, the z2 transposed, and then we are going to talk about our boy the conjugate. It's, it's really important, okay? It's really important. Do not forget that. z2 has been c, negative d, d and c. And then we had a transpose being nothing other than c, d, negative d and c. This has been our transpose. And do you see what basically changed? Our imaginary part has been multiplied by a factor of negative 1. Okay, if you were to write out z2, you are going to end up with the real part of z2 plus i times the imaginary part of z2 in this case, which is nothing other than 0, negative d, d and 0. Okay, this is what we had right here. And now you might see that if we were to multiply this matrix by a scalar of negative 1, well, and then add the real part of z2, which is going to be preserved together with this new imaginary part, we are going to end up with exactly the transpose. Okay, meaning in conclusion, z2 transpose is thus nothing but the real part of z2 minus the imaginary part times i of z2. Now, this is interesting, right? And it has a really uh, important geometric meaning. This thing, this transpose of z2, we are going to define it as being the complex conjugate of the number z2. Can be denoted by a bar above it or it can be denoted by a star next to it. Really depends on the teacher that you have in your class, okay? I'm going to use this one from time to time or this one. If you have a long expression of complex numbers, it's more useful to use the star right here. Physicists use, for example, the star most of the time. But yeah, this is it. This is our complex conjugate. And like I said, it has a geometric meaning to it. We are going to talk about this when introducing the set of complex numbers as a vector space and then finding an isomorphism to R2 and taking a look at it in the um, Euclidean plane, okay? Spoiler alert, episode 5 or so, yeah. This is our complex conjugate. Now we are going to find out a few things about the complex conjugate, okay? For example, what happens if we add the complex conjugate of set 1 together with the complex conjugate of set 2? Now, this is going to be z1 is this thing right here and z2 is going to be this yet again. We are going to end up with, uh, okay, complex conjugate is just a transpose of z1, meaning it's a, b, negative b and a plus and then c, d, negative d and c. Overall, it's defined point wise, okay, yet again, matrix addition, leaving us with a plus c and then plus 
um, b plus d, I'm terribly sorry, and then we are going to have the negative sign, we are going to factor it out, okay, the important part, negative b plus d and then a plus c. And if you remember from the last time, if we were to add z1 and z2 together, okay, this is a plus c in those entries, and also we would have negative b plus d and b plus b down here, okay? This is something that we had the last time, meaning overall this is z1 plus z2, but the transpose of this thing, meaning it's the complex conjugate. Meaning our complex conjugate is being preserved under addition and thus also under subtraction. What about multiplication? If we were to have z1 conjugate times z2 conjugate, we are going to end up with um, a, b, negative b, a, times c, d, negative d, and c. Leaving us with, okay, doing this basic stuff yet again, as always, we're going to have a c minus b d. This is the same that we had the last time, okay, and it's going to be the same entry down here. And now we are going to have for next one, a d plus b z. And after that, everything negative, negative, AD plus BC. And yet again, if you think back to the last video, this is going to be exactly Z1 times Z2, but the complex conjugate of this whole thing. It's a transpose of this thing, yet again. Meaning it's also being preserved under multiplication and thus under division. And that's our complex conjugate. It's really important. And you can pause and ponder now and think about what happens if you were to multiply Z1 together with its complex conjugate. What is this going to result in? This is something really interesting. And when we are going to talk about those isomorphisms and vector spaces, we're going to go into more detail about this. It's, it's a really important concept. It kind of has something to do with the determinant right here. Okay, it's a really cool thing. Up until that, I think guys watching, this has been just a short complimentary episode of Complex Numbers But Different. But if you did enjoy it, please like, subscribe and recommend channel. If you like, don't forget to buy those tiers I create. Also support channel on Patreon. Until the next video, have a flammable day. Ciao. Ich muss mir öfter machen.